Hi friends, my name is Jenny and I'm back today to do another video. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the 17 books that I read in the month of May. This was definitely a very great reading month. Honestly, I'm not sure how I read so many books. I think vlogging for so much of the month did kind of motivate me to read more, which is good to know because I definitely am kind of entering a time when I probably will be reading less. I definitely don't think I will be able to match 17 books in any part of the rest of this year. But in terms of total page count, that ended up being about 5,100 pages, which is crazy. I average usually about 4,000-ish pages a month, so 5,100 was definitely like blowing it out of the water. So of the 17 books I read, one was written by a man and the rest were written by women. Actually, eight of the books that I read were written by authors of color, which means that nine of the books I read were written by white authors, so a little less than half, which is kind of where I'd like to be, so hopefully I can continue to be reading diversely throughout the rest of the year. I also listened to three books on audio, I read four ebooks, and the other 10 books I read physically. I owned 14 of the books I read and three of the books I read from the library. Uh, I also read mostly 2021 releases. That was 10 of the books that I read this month. I also read four 2020 releases, one 2019 release, a 2017 release, and a book originally published in 1952. I also read one YA book this month for the Reading Woman Challenge and the other 16 were for adult audiences, which is pretty typical for me. And then I read seven nonfiction books this month, which I think was in part because of Springathon when I was reading a lot of nonfiction, but I also read some other nonfiction later in the month as well. So those are kind of all of my stats. Now, as I said, I did vlog a lot this month. I had three different vlogs in which I talked about nine of the total 17 books that I read this month. So hopefully this video will be relatively short. Additionally, the other books that I read this month were sometimes kind of niche. So I feel like we'll be able to get through them relatively quickly. So starting as always with the books that I enjoyed the least and moving to the books that I enjoyed the most, I also will not be going into a ton of depth about any of the books I talked about in a vlog, but all the vlogs will be linked up in the cards above as well as in the description box below. So the book that I enjoyed the least this month was Fathoms the World in the Braille by Rebecca Giggs. This one I read for the Springathon and honestly I didn't really like it. I love the concept here which is about whales and kind of using whales as an analog for our as humans greater relationship with the environment. However, I thought the writing in here was really pretentious to the point that sometimes Rebecca Giggs was not actually making any sense. Additionally, I kind of wish this had been more rooted in ecological studies and kind of environmental studies and less so in philosophy as I don't really care about philosophy and this very much felt like kind of more in that like environmental humanity sphere than like an environmental science, environmental social science sphere, which is what I am more interested in. So this was only three stars. I thought it was okay. I do know though that a lot of other readers of environmental nonfiction on booktube really enjoyed this one. So take my review with a grain of salt. Then next in terms of my like least favorite to most favorite, we have Sia Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. I read this for the reading woman prompt of reading a YA book by a Latinx author. And this is a YA book about Sia Martinez, whose mother was deported by ICE back to Mexico, where she is from. And in her attempt to return back to Arizona, her mother actually disappeared and everyone assumed that she is dead. And so Sia is kind of dealing with the ramifications of this. This happened several years ago, but it still obviously impacts her quite a lot. However, as the novel progresses, we realize that something else may have happened to her mother uh, that involves aliens. And so the year is kind of then a twist into science fiction as we learn more about the secret plot by the government to use undocumented immigrants to the United States to do research related to aliens. And so then we kind of are uncovering that plot during the like last third of the novel. And I thought this was fine. I think if you enjoy YA books, you probably would enjoy this more than I did. I just am not a huge fan of YA, particularly because I find it really tropey. And this book definitely fell into a lot of tropes I don't really care about. The first one being that the best friend of our main character, Sia, is kind of a terrible friend. She does not communicate very well. She's not very kind to Sia. I mean, Sia's not very kind to her either. But I'm always really frustrated by friendships that are depicted in YA that seem actually very toxic and not actually like a beneficial friendship as I feel like that gives kind of weird messaging around friends and how friends are supposed to kind of support you in your life. I also didn't love the romantic relationship here which is kind of a central tenet of this book as it falls into the like new boy arrives to our school and the main character is immediately enamored with him and he's immediately enamored with her and they get together like two days after they meet. Like none of that feels realistic to me either. Additionally speaking of the relationship this book also is very 
very sex positive, which I think is important in a YA book. Obviously, there are teens that are having sex, and so I think portraying that in fiction is important. However, as an adult reader reading about juniors in high school, like having sex, I felt somewhat uncomfortable. However, this book is also like not marketed for me, and I was reading it because of a challenge and not because I wanted to read about a relationship between teenagers. But I just wanted to kind of warn anyone else who was thinking about reading this book for the reading room challenge. If reading about teenagers having sex makes you uncomfortable, maybe steer clear of this one because it happens a lot, and I just I didn't love that as a person that is far removed from that age group. Reading about minors having sex just like made me a little uncomfy. That was kind of another thing that I just didn't particularly love about this book, although I do understand that for actual teen readers that is important to kind of depict the healthy ways that teenagers can and should be having sex, if that makes sense. So I thought this one was fine. It was pacey. The chapters are very short and I listened to this on audio and literally the chapters would be like two minutes long because they are probably just like a page or two in the actual physical copy. And so I thought that was fun too. I enjoyed how quickly I got through this book. And I did find the kind of science fiction elements and the commentary it made on immigration and the government at large, I thought was pretty interesting. I just didn't particularly love this book primarily just because it's a YA book and it fell into a lot of classic YA things. Next up is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, which I read for the Mere Christianity May read-along hosted by Krista from Books and Jams. And honestly, I was kind of disappointed by this one. I feel like I've heard this talked about by Christians that I'm friends with or, you know, speak to about Christianity, that this book was something that they really enjoyed. And as someone who's like adjacent to Christianity, my grandparents were and are very religious people and I've kind of dipped in and out of like understanding Christianity and thinking about its relationship to my own kind of spiritual beliefs at various points during my like adult life and so I wanted to read this book just to see if this kind of provoked any more deep thoughts in me. However C.S. Lewis's perspective on Christianity to me is very much rooted in his time which it you know he was born in 18 98 and he died in 1963 and he was giving these talks and then this became a book in the 1940s and 50s around World War II and then the immediate aftermath of World War II and as a like upper middle class I would assume white British person living during this time Christianity was so rooted in that culture that I think a lot of his viewpoints on what Christianity is are actually to me more rooted in the culture of upper middle class British people and less so in actual like Christian theology. I think he conflates those two things quite a lot in this book and that frustrated me given that I find the most value in Christian theology that is rooted in kind of radical transformation, black liberation, environmental activism. Like those are the aspects of Christianity that are most interesting to me as opposed to kind of the stasis of like white upper middle class people with a European background. Like that's not the aspect of Christianity that I'm most interested in. Obviously that is where C.S. Lewis is coming from. I also just think his interests in Christianity are not the same as mine. I personally, and this is why I don't consider myself a Christian person, like I don't find the Jesus died for your sins element of Christianity to be the most interesting aspect of it. And obviously that is for many people the most important part of Christianity. And so that was a huge part of this book and that's just not an element that I'm particularly drawn to in terms of like thinking about Christianity as a theological concept, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I thought this was fine. I think if you already are a member of a Protestant church in particular, I think you would probably enjoy this book more than I did, get more out of it. But I think in terms of coming to this book as a non-Christian, this is not as engaging as I expected it would be given that C.S. Lewis at one point also was a non-Christian. And then finally my last three-star read of the month was Revival Season by Monica West which also dealt a lot with Christianity particularly evangelicalism and I talked about this one in my May ARC vlog so I'm not going to talk a ton about it here but honestly I was kind of disappointed with it that's why I only gave it three stars. I wanted it to dive deeper into some of the themes and also I think the way that it was structured was not the best for the story it was trying to tell but I do talk more in depth about all of those things in that ARC vlog so I'll definitely link that up in the cards above. Then my two 3.5 story reads of the month I also talked about in previous videos the first of those was Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manasola. I talked about this one in my Asian readathon vlog. I thought this was enjoyable. It's a solid cozy mystery. I liked the food writing in here, although elements of this book felt very unbelievable to me, which is why I didn't rate it higher than I did. 
And then also I gave 3.5 stars to Bleaker House by Nell Stevens. The subtitle on this one is Chasing My Novel to the End of the World. And this is a memoir of Nell Stevens going to the Falkland Islands after her MFA program in an attempt to write a novel titled Bleaker House. And instead she ends up writing this memoir shortly after, after struggling with writing her novel. I most enjoyed the parts about her in the Falkland Islands thinking about writing her novel and thinking about the place and less enjoyed the fiction that was included here, including bits of this Bleaker House novel and also bits about her life previous to going to the Falkland Islands for this fellowship. So 3.5 stars, there were parts of this I really enjoyed, other parts I didn't really care about. And then moving into my four star reads, the first of those is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. This was an arc that I read not for my arc reading blog, so I'll talk a bit about it more in depth here. I read this right at the beginning of the month and don't remember it super well but it is a literary fiction novel that's actually part of the women's prize shortlist for this year so it's been getting a lot of buzz here on booktube because of that and this is a literary fiction novel set in rural britain that follows two adult twins who are in their 50s who live with their mother in a cottage in this very rural community and their mother dies she's about 80 or 85 and she has a stroke and dies and the two of them after the death of their mother are realizing basically that their lifestyle is no longer one that they can live in the kind of current economic culture that exists in like the 21st century world like they very much live the life that I assume they lived in the 50s and 60s and probably previous to that as well that is kind of traditional rural life and that is just not possible given our globalized capitalist world and I think that's kind of the core of what this book is about is about this loss of rural life because you cannot just be a subsistence farmer and kind of grow your own food and tr trade with people in your community for other things you need. You need to have a job that makes you a minimum wage at, l at the very least if not more than that to pay for all these things that we now associate with a high cost such as paying for funerals, paying for medical expenses, paying for a way of transportation and so this book really digs into the idea of what happens to people who do not have any money whatsoever because they are used to living a subsistence lifestyle and so through that kind of thematic exploration this book also touches on ideas of homelessness obviously rural life poverty and also the kind of relationships and the ways in which people can take advantage of others who are in a very vulnerable position which did make this novel very depressing our main character Jeannie has a lot of people who take advantage of her in terms of her financial situation and also her ignorance as her mother kept her kind of very out of the loop in terms of the reality of their financial situation and the ways in which their mother actually paid for things which was one critique I had of the novel I was a little hesitant to believe that these two 50 year old people were totally out of the loop in terms of how like life works but at the same time I kind of was able to like suspend my disbelief a bit about that I was really saddened by Jeannie's story but I also found it very hopeful in the ways that she continues to persevere through all the hardships that are kind of thrown at them. I thought this was a really interesting novel. I've not read that many novels that kind of tackle ideas of homelessness and poverty and particularly in a very rural setting as I think that is very different than homelessness in an urban setting. I definitely want to hear kind of more people's thoughts on it. I have seen a lot of people talk about like planning to read it because it's on the women's prize but I've not seen a ton of people actually review it so I'll definitely be curious to hear other people's kind of thoughts on this one I know it just came out here in the states on May 18th and I can't remember if I said this but this was an arc that I received from Tin House so thank you Tin House for providing me an early copy of this one then my next four star read was Animal by Lisa Tadeo I read this one also in my arc vlog so as I said they'll be linked up in the cards above this is Tadeo's debut novel she wrote Three Women which was a nonfiction work that I believe she published in 2019 and this one is coming out on June 8th so this coming Tuesday and I enjoyed this one it's very dark and it touches on a lot of similar themes as three women did but I thought it was pretty pacey it's kind of a literary thriller and I thought the kind of character relation was very interesting I also really like today's writing style so overall this was a success for me but at the same time I kind of feel like I didn't fully get everything that was going on so I gave this one four stars. Then the next four star read I had was Broken Horses by Brandi Carlyle which is Brandi Carlyle's memoir. I love Brandi Carlyle. She is probably one of my favorite musical artists. She definitely was 
a very seminal aspect of my college years and I also went to see her with my best friend right after graduating from college at the Telluride Bluegrass Festival. We were able to go to the like VIP section of the festival because we were actually working the festival in the beer tent and we saw her up close in the VIP section and just like sobbed the entire time so I was excited that she had a memoir and I feel like this was engaging. I don't love memoirs usually and I especially don't really care about celebrity memoirs and so there were aspects of this that I thought were just kind of fine but not groundbreaking. I think my favorite parts of this were definitely learning more about the backstory of certain songs that I recognized. I also loved that Brandi Carlyle sings a lot of songs on the audiobook of this so definitely if you're interested in listening or consuming this in some way I'd highly recommend the audiobook although apparently the physical copy also has pictures so you win some you lose some depending on which route you go with this. I really loved listening to her sing particularly she'd talk about a song in a chapter and then she'd sing the song which obviously is very fun. I am as I said quite a big fan of her though and I did know a lot of what was talked about in this book previously but it was still nice to kind of have it as one coherent narrative and I do think it gave me a deeper appreciation for her as an artist which obviously is the point of a celebrity memoir. So I enjoyed this one. I think if you're a fan of Brandi Carlyle I would recommend it. If you've never heard of Brandi Carlyle definitely listen to her music. It's very good. She sings like folk Americana music but if you are not a fan of her Obviously I don't think this memoir is for you as I don't think you'd get anything out of it but I had a fun time. Then my next four star book was Bewilderness by Karen Tucker which I also read in my ARC vlog. This is about two best friends living in rural North Carolina who are dealing with opioid addiction and they're attempting to get clean through this novel but there are a lot of setbacks through that process. One that happens at the very beginning of the novel but I don't want to spoil it because I don't think it's given away on the blurb and that happens right at the beginning but I really enjoyed this novel quite a lot. I think it does a great job at making you external to their friendship and so you as the reader are able to see how toxic the friendship is while also allowing you to understand why it is that they're so dependent on one another. I also liked that the book kind of played with the timeline of the story. There's some parts of the story we know from the beginning but we don't know a lot about them and I enjoyed the process of uncovering some of the elements of the story. It definitely does not shy away from any of the harsher aspects of addiction and the path to sobriety so do be kind of cognizant of that before you go into this book but I really enjoyed it. It's a debut novel and definitely intrigued to see where Karen Tucker goes next. Then I read Imposter Syndrome by Kathy Wang which I read for my Asian readathon vlog and I enjoyed this one. This was another literary thriller that I think touches on ideas of work and particularly women and mothers and their relationship to work and success and kind of being driven at work and the different choices you have to make as a mother who's also interested in kind of progressing in her career. This book also has spies in it which I do enjoy spy stories for whatever reason and so I had fun with this one. I think it is a solid read. It definitely very much feels like a book of the month book in that it's very entertaining, it's engaging, it's not the like deepest most literary book you'll ever read but it's still fun and feel like a good kind of light book club book if that makes sense. Then also for my Asian readathon vlog I read Whereabouts by Jimpa Lahiri. Jimpa Lahiri is one of my favorite author so I was super excited to read her latest novel which was actually written in Italian and she translated it and it just came out back in March I think and I enjoyed this. I think because of Jimpa Lahiri I enjoyed it more than I may have otherwise. This is kind of a series of vignettes so I think because I love her novels and her short stories I enjoyed this as it's kind of a blend of those two things. I do think that this novel touches on and explores the ideas of kind of tracking our everyday life and the way that we think about things that happen to us in our life and how the amount of importance we give those things and how that importance can sometimes shift over time. But I really enjoyed this one quite a lot. Is it my favorite Jumbo Lahiri thing I've ever read? No but because it's Jumbo Lahiri I did enjoy it. Then moving into my 4.5 star reads I had a very successful reading month. I didn't read anything below three stars and most of the things I enjoyed quite a bit this month. So I'm quite pleased with how this reading month turned out but my first 4.5 star read of the month was The Office of Historical Corrections, a novella and stories by Daniel Evans. This as it says on the tin is a short story collection with The Office of Historical Corrections as the final novella which is about 100 pages and I enjoyed this collection quite a lot. I think it gets better and better as the stories progress. I found the first three or four stories to be pretty forgettable but then my 
favorite story or one of my favorite stories was Anything Could Disappear, which is the penultimate story, which is about a young woman who basically has to take on a young boy who gets left on a bus and she is involved in some kind of illegal activities related to her job and also has technically kidnapped this boy and it's basically about the relationships that we form with people and motherhood and loss of motherhood and just a bunch of really interesting thought-provoking themes that was really gut-wrenching in like a very short amount of time so I loved that one. I also loved the Office of Historical Corrections. I feel like thematically it explored a lot of things. I will say in general this collection I think thematically is phenomenal but sometimes there's just a bit too much going on. I read this with my book club that I do with two of my besties from college and we all agreed that Daniel Evans kind of seemed to be taking on at times too many different ideas into one short story like I think both the Office of Historical Corrections and another story which is a pretty popular one here on booktube and it seems in general with people who read this collection which is called Boys Go to Jupiter which is about a young woman a young white woman who is in college and goes to spring break and wears a bikini with a confederate flag on it and the story kind of devolves from there. I feel like both that story and the Office of Historical Corrections could have honestly been made full-length novels because there was just so much going on that I feel like things could have been developed a bit more and this short story format kind of left a little bit wanting in terms of what the story was trying to convey. But even still I thoroughly enjoyed this collection. Definitely intrigued to read Daniel Evans's earlier collection of stories and would love to see her write a novel as well because I think she would write a fantastic novel. So yeah definitely worth the hype. I think that this book has been getting. I thoroughly enjoyed it and my book club did as well. And then I started this at the beginning of the month and read it throughout the entire month which I think did this book justice because I think it's best taken in kind of slower chunks and that is All We Can Save Truth, Courage, and Solutions for the Climate Crisis edited by Ayana Elizabeth Johnson and Katherine K. Wilkinson. This is a collection of short pieces of non-fiction. I guess they're essays. They're kind of anecdotes almost. I don't quite want to call them essays but I guess they are as well as some poetry. I will kind of show you an example. So we have like short poems as well as then kind of short entries from a lot of people that are working in the climate sphere and this really touches on almost every aspect of the climate sphere. So regardless of where your interest in climate change lies, whether that's climate change mitigation like energy transitioning to a clean energy economy, whether that's climate adaptation like me, there's a whole section with full of urban planners that I just loved. That was by far my favorite section. Whether you're interested in the psychological impacts that climate change and biodiversity loss are having on our psyches, there's sections on that. Whether you're interested in more kind of activism surrounding climate change and the sunrise movement, whether you're interested in policy, there's something for everyone here I think to kind of dig into and think about and relate to their own interests which I think is kind of what Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson and Katherine K. Wilkinson's work is centered on is getting everyone involved in climate crisis solution work because everyone has a role that they can play. Obviously there were entries that I was less engaged with just because those are not the aspects of climate change that I'm most interested in but at the same time I think those sections would appeal more to other people than the sections that most engaged me. So I thoroughly enjoyed this, would highly recommend if you're at all interested in the climate crisis and solutions. This is a very hopeful book about climate change which I think is also very important and I also would highly recommend Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson's How to Save a Planet podcast that she does with Alex somebody who's a veteran kind of podcast maker and it's produced by Gimlet Media and I know it's on Spotify because I listen to it on Spotify. They have new episodes every Friday and it is very similar to this although it's kind of in podcast form and it's about the ways that we can all kind of work to save our planet. Thoroughly enjoyed this one, give it 4.5 stars, would highly highly recommend this as like an almost must read. Then my final 4.5 star read of the month was Clara Park's Vanishing Fleece Adventures in American Wool. I got this from my sister who is a big craft person and I was very interested in this book because I'm really interested in sustainable fashion and localism and I think Clara Parks is also interested in both of those things and I loved this book. It's a teeny tiny little book. I listened to it on audio as well and Clara Parks narrates the audiobook and she does a great job. She's a very welcoming and calm voice. This book tracks Clara Parks journey through understanding the yarn making process in America which I am not a knitter but I am very interested 
in knitting and making your own clothes in general so i appreciated this book a lot for the way it explored those topics i also think claire parks has a lot of respect for the people that are involved in this process and i think this was also really interesting examination of like sustainable agriculture and kind of product making at large in america i feel like this book could be used as an analog to discuss the collapse of industry of making things in America more broadly and the impacts that that's had on people that historically their families have made things. I feel like this book kind of touches on that and that's definitely something I'm very interested in is the idea of making things and the kind of localism versus globalism dichotomy I find is a very interesting one and this one helped me kind of think about that in a new way and also learn about yarn and sheep which was fun so yeah this is definitely a very niche book I don't think it's for everyone but I thoroughly enjoyed this one and then lastly I had two five star reads of the month both of which I thoroughly enjoyed and definitely think could be favorites of the year the first of those is Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass my library holdenness finally came in and so I read it during the month of May and it was as great as everyone else on booktube that reads Sarah J Mass said it is Sarah J Mass writes fantasy romance I guess she originally was in YA but this is definitely fully like an adult fantasy romance and I thoroughly enjoyed it I do not care whatsoever about the like political machinations greater like political plots of this world I purely care about the romance elements of her books and she does not disappoint this book is very steamy the two main characters Nesta and Cassian go to the bone zone quite a bit in this book. I enjoyed this book for that reason. I think it's a great time. It's like 750 pages. I also think as many other previous reviewers of this book have said it tackles trauma and healing from that trauma both internally but also with the support of people that care about you in really beautiful ways. I also love the friendships depicted here and the ways that sometimes friendships can be more healing for people than kind of familial relationships even if the familial relationships come from a place of love I thought that was really well done as well obviously if you are a fan of Sarah J Mass, you probably have already heard of this book otherwise you have no interest in it whatsoever so I think that's all I'm gonna say but I enjoyed it I gave it five stars it was a grand old time then finally the last book that I'm gonna be talking about in my favorite book of the month was Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee this is another nonfiction book that is in search of my family's past among Taiwan's mountains and coasts and this one honestly just ticked like all of my boxes in terms of what I love in a book it touched on memory it touched on family relationships it touched on ecological history and environmental history and the intersection of those two things in a really beautiful ways i think this book ties all those themes together really well i talked about this one quite a bit in my spring fun vlog but yeah definitely a book that i think i'll continue to be thinking about and would highly recommend if you are interested in environmental nonfiction, particularly environmental nonfiction that touches on the relationship between history and ecology so those are all the 17 books that i read in the month of may if you have read any of these books and want to talk to me about them down in the comments section below please feel free to do so additionally if you are new to my channel i'd love to have you stick around and subscribe i hope you're having a great rest of your day whenever you watch this and i will talk to you next time bye